Hello everybody! So happy that you found me. I am Lisa Concepcion, certified professional life coach and founder of lovequestcoaching.com where I help people slay narcissists and crush codependency. I am going to share with you my little story, my little soap opera about how I, in 2015, had a bit of a run-in, if you will, with a narcissist. Why I got involved in this relationship, I'm going to break it all down for you because I feel like when you hear my story, you're going to feel a lot of yourself in it. You're going to identify. And then I'm going to give you something that you can do, something that I cooked up to help people slay their narcissists once and for all and cure themselves of codependency, just like I did in 2015. And it completely transformed my life. And so if I can do it, you can do it. So I'm going to dive right in and here's a few lessons, some wisdom, some stuff that you can learn from my experience. And I hope this lands for you well. Maybe it will trigger you, be warned. But in the end, we learn the most from information that is meant for us. So if this is finding you, it means it is meant for you. So let's begin. The year is 2015. And I was separated from my husband at the time. And we had a long separation because codependency. I couldn't let go. He couldn't let go. We weren't really functioning as a married couple. We were living separately, yet we were hanging out. It was very confusing. And codependent people stay in things too long. They don't know how to separate for real. They don't know how to end something. They, they would rather stay in something and force it to work even though it's like beyond dead and and in my case i honestly wanted to start something completely different i was like listen we love each other this is crazy we promise to be with each other till death why don't we just figure this out start something completely new right and make some new agreements, figure out what we want to do, what we want to be in our lives, and go for it. Ex-husband wasn't having it. So it was heartbreaking, heartbreaking. When he told me that he wanted to get divorced, and it's not like he was like, rah, rah, let's get divorced. He was, you know, kind of agonizing over the decision too, but he didn't know what the future can look like. He lost the vision. He didn't see a future for us. So that's tip number one. When they are telling you that they don't see a future, they don't have vision for their future with you, means it's time to go. So I did not do that until it was pretty much put in my face like we need to be getting divorced. And I was at a place where I was in stagnation. So my career was suffering. I was suffering, I felt lost in my life, and that's what happens when you're codependent and you are tethered to a person for your identity, your your survival, your entire world is this person, and who you are in this person's life is everything. And then when they cut that and decide to go someplace else or do something different, you're left like a puppet with your strings cut off because you were once tethered to this person and now strings off and you're just like lost like a feather in the breeze and it's devastating. So codependency is insidious. It causes people to make decisions based on lack, scarcity, fear. You're very much rooted in fear when you're codependent. You are constantly looking for validation, love, approval outside of the self, massive trap. Like I said before, you can't rely on people. They're fickle. They're fickle. One minute, I love you. My God, love you. Next minute, I don't know if I love you anymore. I'm going to go. Bye. So you can't control that. 
but you can control you. So here I am back in 2015, devastated. My God, love of my life, college boyfriend together, 17 years. How did we get here? This is terrible disaster. So instead of doing the healthy thing, which is go through the divorce, deal with the pain, hire somebody to really kind of help me, whether it's therapy, coaches, whatever. I did not do this. Why? Because codependent, you look outside of yourself for soothing. So I went into a rebound relationship. Now, here's why this is so dangerous and why I see so many people do this and they end up coming to me for coaching and I know where they were because I was there too. I could totally have compassion and empathy, honey. I know what that is when you are miserable, somebody you thought was gonna marry you, somebody that you thought was gonna hold your hand when you died, you are in it forever. And they say, no, nah, no. And you're left there like, oh my God. And then you think, I can't be alone. I can't, it's too sad. It's too sad, it's too sad to be alone and crying over this all the time. This is terrible. And maybe if I just, go into another relationship, I'll be distracted and then I'll feel better and it's all about feeling better. So that's what I did. I entered a rebound relationship and because my vibration was so sad, so heartbroken, so miserable, I attracted someone who was more miserable than I was. This is what's called trauma bonding. You bond with somebody in your misery, while they are in their misery and you get together and then craziness happens. And in the beginning, it's as if you're rescuing each other. Oh my God, this horrible thing happened to you. They don't want you. Well, I want you. Thank you. That's what we're saying to each other. You know, this person didn't want me either. They don't know what's good. We're good. So we're going to be together. We're going to show them. Whew. Disaster. So luckily, this craziness of this relationship, and I'm going to describe what I was experiencing in this relationship. It lasted five months. But as we know, with narcissistic people and codependent narcissistic dynamic, that volatility of those five months, whew, it felt like five years. It was every day up and down, up and down. Six days good, three days no good, then back to good, crazy. Very, very volatile, not good. So what ended up happening was this person love bombed me. Love bombing, that means that you get together with somebody and by the second week they're saying that they're in love with you and that they want a future with you and then they start telling you how lovable you are how amazing you are and they tell you that this is the type of future that they want and they want it with you and it's a beautiful future really nice travel house all kinds of fun right and you're like buying into it, right? Because as a codependent, you're like, yeah, okay, I have to believe this. I want to believe this. It's so good. This is good. And if I don't have this, then I have to go back to my cave, my sad cave, and face the actual loss, emotion, everything that really is going on. So it's like a fake existence. At least that's how it happened to me. And this person was throwing so much love on me, fake love, albeit, but I didn't care because I wanted that. I was so hungry for validation, for feeling worthy, and that when this person put their attention on me, buying me expensive presents, perfumes, handbags, the whole thing, taking me to Cancun after one month, one month, I don't even know this person. I'm flying in an airplane, international. What am I thinking? But I did it. 
And it was all part of the courtship. It was part of that whirlwind courtship where they groom you by love bombing you. They get you in and then you buy into it. And now you're invested. And then comes the crazy. And then comes the bouts of depression, the bipolar, the up one minute, down the next. I had situations where here I am all dressed up pretty, ready to go to dinner, all excited. We go, and then middle of the dinner, I go to the ladies' room where I'm talking to the other people, and I look over at him, and I see his face, the whole expression completely changed. Really creepy. And I started to sense his facial expressions. Isn't that crazy? I wasn't even with this man more than like 90 days, and I already knew that how his face would fall and change when he got into what I would call a swirl, a depressive swirl. He would go down like a drain of depression just by stringing thoughts together. And I, for whatever reason, because I was so chipper, hipper, happy, la la la, I took it upon my responsibility to rescue him, to pull him out of the swirl, out of the quicksand. So I took that on as my responsibility to get him out of that. So I made his happiness my responsibility. And in turn, I tethered myself to him, his moods, his happiness, all of it. Crazy. Codependency, insidious, awful. So this man is basically running my emotional life, right? Every single mood, I'm like walking around, eggshells. Is today gonna be a good day? Hope it's gonna be a good day. We're gonna go to the beach. It's gonna be a good day. I hope so. Right? You're you're living like that. Terrible. So what happens? He decides that he needs to go to therapy, and I agree. So we go to he goes to the therapy, and the therapist realized and helped him to realize that. He was living the relationship that he wanted with his ex-girlfriend, who's now his wife, with me. So he was living this whole relationship with me that he wanted to really have with her. And that's why mentally he would go like off the rails. Made sense. Okay, they're married now. I think they even had a baby. Like, blessings to them. Okay. But what my thing was was codependency. So, it meant that I held on to this guy for dear life. It was as if my divorce was as if I was um, uh, like Titanic, Rose. Remember Rose, the movie Titanic, and she's on the, the wood, and Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack, is there with her. And for whatever reason, they couldn't both fit on the wood. I never could understand this, but you know, he's like, it's okay, Rose, you have it. Okay, fine. So here's the Rose, and then Rose realizes he's dead. And she's like, I'll never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. And she lets him go, goes to the bottom of the sea. But she's on the board in the middle of the ocean, freezing. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? That was like me. Once divorce was happening, I felt as if I was like Rose on the wood plank in the middle of the freezing Atlantic, waiting, figuring out what, I'm going to die here. That's what I felt like. Lost, alone, I'm going to die. And so this man came along and he was like, you know, the, the, the boat to rescue me. And that is codependency. It's looking outside of yourself for rescue. You're not emotionally self-reliant when you're codependent. Now, where does codependency even come from? This is the work I had to do, right? So when this nightmare happened to myself... Now I have nothing, and it's like a tidal wave of loss. So now, you know, putting off, not grieving the divorce for six months, now all of a sudden it hits me like a wave, and I'm just done with. I'm in this dark pit, awful, depressed, horrible, couldn't eat, couldn't sleep, had panic attacks, disaster. So I said to myself one day, I remember it very clearly, I was in my apartment back in South Beach, Miami, and it was raining out, and I was under the covers, and I couldn't get out of bed, and that's so not like me, and I think I had like this experience where I like hovered over myself, like my, gen my genuine 
real me, you know, the God force of me, divine, true inner being me, had like this hovering over me, looking at me depressed and, and in the bed, crying and whatever. And it was in that moment that I had this inspired question that I think that Godful me whispered to the broken me and said, what is it in me? What is it in me that would attract this? That would get me here? How did this happen to me? What is it in me that needed to believe what this guy was saying? What is it in me that needed to seek out a relationship when I was at my lowest? You should seek out a relationship when you're at your best, not when you're at your lowest. Never, ever, ever, ever seek a relationship when you're feeling low because you're going to attract low narcissist people, narcissistic people, toxic people, people who are lower than you. More drama, more issues happening in their life. But when you work on yourself and you heal yourself and you take alone time, which is what I finally ended up doing, and I magically, through therapy, coaching, um, a lot of self-care, I transformed. And so it was such a significant, poignant transformation in my life that I was inspired to turn it into a career. So I decided after I came outside of this horrible well, if you can imagine a deep, dark well, and you're pushed in it and you're sad and you don't know how you're going to get out of this well and you're depressed and you think your whole world as you know it is over because it is and you're looking up at this tiny little dot which is the top of the well the light you see a little bit of light and you're like how did I get here I have to go there and I can't and I don't know what to do the second I asked the question how did I get here how did I get in this pit of the well, the dark shit pit, shit pit with bricks and then more shit on top of me. How did, with a little light out the side, the light, go to the light. How did I get here? How did I get here? And when I started asking that question, it was like the light started to shine and the right coaches, the right acupuncturist, nutritionist, who else? Reiki master, um, what else? books. I read this sucker over here. I have it over here on my, on my end of the table. All these books on narcissism. Amazing. Read all of it. Couldn't gobbled it up, gobbled it up. Online courses about codependency. So what I did was I declared, and this is October 2015, I declared a 90 day divorce detox. So the detox is the big thing in this whole thing, right? So I was like, okay, I got divorced. I went through this narcissistic thing. So I'm like, I'm going to do a narcissistic divorce, divorce detox all in one. I am Operation Heal Lisa from within. Everybody, I hired a team. Like I said, I had therapists for 12 weeks. I had coaches. I had nutritionists because I couldn't eat. I did some stuff with um, a to, to rewire my brain chemistries, my, my wiring, my neuro pathways in my brain because I developed food aversions. I became sound sensitive. It was all PTSD. Crazy. But this is fascinating when you start to study this stuff because you see how the mind works and how like it's a sponge in your brain and you can have a trauma happen that you didn't even realize and then months later you hear the sound of a Ducati motorcycle because this is what this guy drove and you're and, and what happened to me was I was at a stop light ready to cross the street for my to go to my house I was walking Taz my dog and um, I heard like in the hum of, of the it was like in my head it felt like the sound of the engine of a Ducati motorcycle that had pulled up right beside me as I was crossing the street. 
and I was standing there and then all of a sudden I heard that motorcycle engine like pounding in my head because it reminded me of being on his motorcycle and I literally stood on the street I had Taz's his, uh, leash around my wrist thank God and I remember holding my ears and being like, oh my God, what's happening to me? What is happening? And I just was panicked because it's never happened to me before ever. So I'm crying and the light changes. I go upstairs, I'm freaking out. And you know, this was what it was. So like the whole PTSD aspect of it is real for anybody who's watching. I don't know if you've ever been through narcissistic abuse or you know, narcissistic entanglement, you know, with somebody who has these traits. And, you know, I'll give you some more traits, right? So there's the love bombing thing. That's definitely one. Then there's this, and this isn't necessarily what this person did, but this is what, you know, as I became coaching and, and becoming the narcissist slayer, because that's what I do. I slay narcissists now and I help people do the same and I teach them how to get out of codependency and into emotional um, solvency, that you're emotionally self-reliant and that you can deal with yourself and tend to yourself and nurture yourself better than anyone ever could or should, right? So you teach, I teach that now and I'm going to give you a thing that I'm working on, very exciting, at the end that you can do. Okay, so some of the traits with narcissists, grandiosity, they brag, oh, I have this, I did this. Back in the day, I had this, and now I'm doing this, and I have this. And, you know, it's uh, an, an attitude of I'm the best. The other one is um, victimization. This was one that the guy had that I, that I was with. He would paint himself in every story as the victim. Every story. He wanted the violins and, like, the, you know, the, I'm so sorry this happened to you and all the victim. A lot of victimization because they want you to take pity on them. Because then you 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 feel sorry. You're so empathic. You're you know compassionate. Oh, how can this happen? It's terrible. Meanwhile, they're they're lying. You don't know what's right and what what's real and what's not. They vilify other people. They they um, narcissists. They love to talk shit and they slander and smear the people that they're against. So the whole time I was with this guy, he's telling me. I'm amazing, I'm an angel from heaven, and this ex-wife of his, disaster. Um, ex, an ex-girlfriend also, another disaster. He would vacillate between the two. My ex-wife, she did this to me, it was terrible. When I was this and this and that and the other, I knew everything about this man's past to the narrative that he was selling to me. And I was put up on a pedestal because he was with these two disasters and in comes me, the shiny thing, right? So I'm believing it. Why would I not, right? But now come out the other side, you're wiser. I'm much wiser. And now I teach people how to shift from codependency to emotional self-reliance, to good health, to good judgments, strong boundaries, so that they can go out in the world and date and have relationships and friendships and not attract people who are takers and that they leech on to you and they manipulate you and take from you and it's exhausting these people they're soul sucking so that was kind of my jam and so what i did was i went all in on my self care and i committed fully and I invest in time and money and I would study myself every day. I was reading a book, doing a course. I was 100% all in on my well-being, and I started to put myself first. And in doing so, I sent a message to the universe, to God, that I wasn't messing around and that I deserved to feel good. And I started there. It was the first little baby step. I said, I deserve to feel good. I deserve to feel good. That's it. I don't feel good. I don't like this. I want to feel good. I'm committed to feeling good. And I didn't care. Oh my God, honey, if, if you told me to take this little thing of seashells and balance it on my head and hold it there and then maybe like wobble from side to side 
and you said, if you do this for 10 minutes a day, you're going to cure yourself of codependency, I would have done it. And I would have spent like five grand for the shells. I'm kidding. I'm not getting you. That's how, that's how committed I was to feel good, to feel, to get out of this thing, to learn what it's about so that I can conquer it. So months later, now we're February, 2016. I came out of my 90 day detox that I did for myself. I wrote notes, I codified everything, I have it all in journals because I said I'm gonna make sure that I remember this. Every step I took to getting better, to getting myself whole and healed and emotionally self-reliant and self-loving. And I came out of the situation and I was like, wow, like I felt like I, you know, woo, like I can't, like I woke up from a hangover, like a really bad hangover. And I had, I, for the first time in months, I had some sense of clarity. And I felt good in myself. I had lost a bunch of weight because I couldn't eat, remember? But then little by little, my food aversions started to go away a little. And I was able to little by little regain all the food that I like to eat, right? So little week by week, it was like another thing that I was able to eat again. This was serious, serious business because it's really your, your neuro pathways get all jacked out. I mean, you feel a sense of, un, of being unsafe, that you don't know how to keep yourself safe. You don't know, you're, you're like, what the hell? Like my, my whole thing was, what the hell happened? I'm like this badass bitch from the Bronx. I can sense bullshit coming a mile away, yet I mm -hmm. didn't see this level of bullshit coming right at me. In fact, I sought it out, and that made me petrified. I couldn't keep myself safe. It said to me, any asshole can come and throw you a line of bullshit and because you're so empty and you don't know how to be emotionally self-reliant, you're going to buy any bag of bullshit they're going to sell you, right? So I had to get that handled. I didn't feel like I can trust my judgment. I didn't feel like I had discernment. I felt like I was a feather in the breeze and that anyone can just pluck me and do the same thing to me again. So it made it very um, challenging to trust others when you can't trust yourself. So that was something I absolutely had to handle. So come February 2016, I felt better. And I wasn't 100% out of the woods, but I felt good enough to recognize that I didn't want to be with anybody and I wanted to continue with the detox. I wanted more time to settle into this new normal of not needing somebody else in my life to feel safe, secure, valued, validated, all of that. I can actually, for the first time in my life, chill out, be on my own, and be at peace. Not have any nervousness or any kind of longing. You know, if a relationship happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I like being on my own, it's fine. I'm good either way never felt like that before because codependents codependents typically settle for being alone but it's not their preferred way of being whereas i now reached a place not now but back then reached a place in my life where i was like okay this is what this feels like like i can totally be on my own and happy and at peace and it feels really good and I can trust myself to have boundaries and to be very clear about what I want and to walk away from anything that is not it and to be an advocate for myself. So I had done a process that I teach. I did it. It was amazing through courses and what have you where it teaches you how to be your protector, your own protector and your own provider of emotional nourishment it teaches you how to go back to the wounded versions of you who typically were on the show. If you're a codependent, your, your nine-year-old wounded self is pretty much showing up in relationships, calling the shots, running the show. But when you, through this method that I teach, when you learn how to stand up and you put your wounded little girls or little boys behind you, and you say, I'm responsible for all of you. You stand behind me and I am going to go out in the world, adult me, and make the decisions here. And if you out there 
want to get to any of my little wounded babies or versions of me from the past, you're going to have to come through me. So you step into your power and you learn how to nurture the wounded sides to you so that they feel safe and secure because they come to you. They're no longer looking outside for soothing. They come to you. And then you feel powerful, you feel peaceful, because you know you got you better than anyone could or should. It's self-love, right? No one should love you more than you love yourself ever, ever. And no one should be in charge of your soothing better than you. It's not their job. And guess what? You're off the hook too, because it's not your job to soothe anybody either. So when you have health, mental, emotional, you are able to be in an interdependent relationship, which means I'm in charge of my feeling good, you're in charge of your feeling good, I try my best to like be pleasant around you, I wanna spectate you feeling good, I want you to do the same. Together we feel good together, and when we have problems, we talk, we hash it out, we come to new agreements, we're civil, and if it doesn't work out, we're able to let it go with peace, love and full understanding that this just means that you outgrew someone and there's another chapter for you to explore there's another part of your life lessons that you have to continue no need to latch on and be so depressed about it you could be sad you could be going through a grieving process you break up with somebody right you, you of course you're gonna miss them you're gonna miss the vibe that you had together all the good times but even with that, you're able to be functioning and okay in, in your life. You're able to accept things. So this is kind of in a nutshell what went down. By 2016, later, later, later that year, I um, was feeling really good. I was dating with purpose. I actually pulled myself out of dating because I was noticing some patterns and I knew how to protect myself and I said okay no more I'm gonna go back to the you know to the basics and when I did that a month later I met the man who I would be in a relationship with a healthy good nice relationship with for four and a half years and it was a beautiful relationship and it's unfortunate that it couldn't go to the next level but this is life sometimes we're meant to just be in a relationship to vibe with each other to a certain level and then we keep growing and keep going. But the point of this is when you are codependent, you lose yourself in other people. You lose your identity in the other person. And sometimes, oftentimes, that person can be very controlling, have narcissistic traits, can be a full-blown narcissist, heavy mind tripping, making you think that you're crazy, picking fights with you because they want what's called supply, right? So you'll just be sitting there minding your own business, doing nothing, and then all of a sudden they'll like try to start a fight with you. And if you're not having it, they get even more upset and they want to come at you even harder. And they just have all these tactics and all these ways of, of picking at you and if you don't know how to handle yourself in that situation it can be very damaging to you very damaging to you so that said I became a certified professional life coach and in 2017 I became certified full-on through the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching and I decided to help people get over narcissistic abuse to get into themselves in a self-loving way, in a very profound, deep love of self, so that they can cure themselves of codependency and thrive in relationships, and mainly the relationship between themselves and source energy or God force or you know your inner being, just the relationship that you have between you and you. It's the number one relationship. Like I always say, I know this person, four and a half years. I know this person, three weeks, four months, six years. I know me almost 50. And I am with me till death and beyond. So people will come, people will go, but you are with you till death and beyond. 
So you need to be your number one truest love to you and your number one protector, advocate, security, safety, all of it has to come from within. From within comes without out to the world. So that said, I decided to cook up something amazing for anybody watching who has struggled with relationship patterns of codependency. You're attracting people who are toxic, not available, unavailable, damaging, awful, taking money from you, overstepping boundaries, squatting in your house, whatever the situation is, you're not having it and you don't know how to get out of it. Or you're out of it, but you're so afraid that it can happen again that you don't even date. You don't even give yourself fully because you're like, oh, this person can be sketchy, I don't know, right? So wouldn't it be so nice if you can just be at peace with yourself, whether you're with a relationship or not with a relationship, you can put yourself out there and you can crank up on love again because you know that nobody's going to affect you one way or another, right? You have you and it's the truest love you'll ever have, right? So, and your worthiness, where does it come from? It doesn't come from other people, right? Your worthiness comes from the creator, the person who will love you no matter what. So I created what is called the 45 day narc detox and codependency crusher this is a 45 day six week immersion and we we do a zoom call it's with a group coaching program that i created it's phenomenal and what you do is you basically get over your exes Get over your past, your people from the past who made you these empty promises and messed with your mind. And you understand why you needed to believe in the love bombing and all the bullshit that they served you, why you stayed so long. You're going to get all the clarity and uh, the reasons, the real reasons, the root cause to the root of why you attracted this person in the first place, why you stayed, why you let them overstep boundaries, all this stuff that you know you need to know in order to proceed and be happy and fulfilled in your life, regardless of whether you're with somebody or not, doesn't matter. If you're in it and you don't know how to get out of it, we're gonna hook you up with an exit strategy. You're gonna create an exit strategy where you can go no contact with support, my support, and exactly what to say, how to plan it, how to get out of it. If you already are out of it, but you're grieving it and you're afraid that they're gonna come back, oh my God, we're gonna handle that also. You're gonna learn how to stop the codependent trap of needing outside approval, validation, being a people pleaser, and having anxious attachments. Now, this is not only for romantic entanglements. This can be for people who are struggling with narcissists in their family, their workplace. Doesn't only mean romantic. I am actually coaching someone who is now in the process of leaving her job because narcissistic boss and totally sabotaging her. And what does she do? Working more like a workaholic, thinking the more she works, the more um, uh, validation and, and approval. And she said, you know what? This is killing me. This is killing me. And all they're doing is throwing digs at me, saying things that are, that are terrible, and I'm taking it? Ridiculous. So she hired me for coach. She hired me for romance. And she saw that the same pattern was happening at her job. And I said, when you handle the job thing, let's start there. Then the relationship thing will fall into place. So, if you're dealing with codependent parents, you have parents and you're they're narcissistic, you're codependent, and every time you see your parents, you feel like you're 14 all over again, this is for you, this is for you. It's about having autonomy, emotional autonomy, self-reliance of the soul. 45 day narc detox, codependency crusher. You're gonna love it. We're gonna get people in a group on Zoom, we're gonna get everybody handled and hashed out. Then you're also going to get in a Facebook group for community so that you have support with one another. Phenomenal. If you're co-parenting with an ARC, 
dealing with an ARC at work or an ARC family member, get the specific communication hacks that put them in their place while maintaining your peace, boundaries, and sanity. Learn impactful boundary setting. If you have weak boundaries, this thing is for you. And this is men and women, honey. I coach men with the weak boundaries. Oh my God, spending money on these women. They're not even really deeply with them, but they get manipulated. And now they're paying for their kids' braces. They're paying for their... And I'm like, are you engaged to this person? Like, are you married? No. Crazy. Crazy. Learn how to slay those narcissists. Spot them out. So that you can size them up and disengage. You don't even deal with these people anymore. Learn how to go from self-abandonment to self-advocacy. Own your truth. Love and care for yourself powerfully and confidently. Mm. And finally, transform your triggers. Ooh, I have a client where every time her ex-husband, I can almost like predict it to the day of the month. It's like he gets his period and he reaches out to her and he tries to pull, push her buttons and sure enough, she'll send me a screenshot and like, what do I say to this? What do I say to him? And she's triggered and angry. And I'm like, girl, you gotta, you gotta chill out, mm. honey. You gotta get to a place where, mm. you know, you look at, mm. you look at this message coming through, and you're like, all right, you know what? I'm gonna watch my show. I'm gonna go take a shower. I'm gonna maybe go to the gym, hang out, whatever. And in my time, I'm gonna cook up a little response put him in his place, I'm going to establish boundaries, I'm going to be on my life, right? But when you don't have the wherewithal of that, and you don't know, you're where you are, mm -hmm. they'll send you a text message, honey, you'll be up until four in the morning, reading it, pacing around your house, son of a bitch, just when things are going good, he comes at me with this message, ridiculous, mumbling to yourself like a crazy person, no good, losing sleep, getting anxious, Terrible. So you get to tame your triggers in this program that I cooked up. It's delicious. It's going to be so good. So that you can, now here's what you're going to get. You do this program with me, this is what you're going to get. You're going to live a peaceful and healthy life. Make yourself a positive energy match to healthy relationships, money, success, opportunities, and you start caring for yourself on this profound level. Honey, look at me. I did it. I did it myself. Changed my whole life. Changed my career. Started working for myself instead of working for someone else. Not like that's anybody's, you know, whatever. But if that's your dream, whatever your dreams are, you start working on yourself, magic starts to happen in your life. Absolutely. So who is this for, this magic that I'm talking about this 45 day narcissistic detox codependency crusher who is this for it's for people who are in a narcissistic codependent dynamic and they want to change it now fed up fed up can't take it anymore it's not good for you you're out of it you're over it you want help it's for people who could commit about an hour a day to their self-care. It's for people who want their life to radically change, are tired of feeling awful, dealing with narcissistic abuse and or codependent relationships and anxious attachment. That icky, anxiety, awful feeling, terrible, no more. You wanna squish that once and for all, this thing is for you. This party is for you. It's for people who already may have left their narc, narcissist, went full on no contact, but they fear that they're going to be hoovered, like the, the vacuum hoover, sucks you right back in. They're afraid of that. So they want accountability. It's for people who want someone on their side who has their back 100%, somebody who's credible, hello, who healed themselves of this mess, hello, and can give you the playbook, the guide, the map, the roadmap, 
to do it yourself in a way that sticks because that's the key a lot of people out there police i read the books i read all the books and i did a course and i did that i did but you didn't integrate it my love it's not integrated it's not part of your being that's what we're gonna get so if you read a bunch of books and you did therapy you did all your stuff amazing good but what you're gonna get to do is you're gonna bring all that knowledge to this and then you're gonna integrate it. It's gonna become a way of life, not just book that you read, but you're gonna internalize it. Very, very different, more, much more significant because that's when you really transform. Information plus application equals transformation. So when people tell me, but I did therapy and I did the books and I did the courses, blah, 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 but did you integrate it? Did the people who taught you, did they teach you how to make it part of your new your new way of life, your new commitment to yourself. So that's what this is about. So Lisa, when does this magic begin? When does this magical program begin? Oh my goodness, I have so many questions. Okay, March 1st, Monday, March 1st. It's gonna be in the evenings, East Coast time. You're gonna be on a Zoom with me. And it's very interactive. So you can bring your notes, you can bring your grievance, your beef, whatever's going on. And together as a group, that's how we learn, right? When people come with their, in, with their situation, two things happen in group coaching. One, you don't feel alone. You don't feel alone. You don't feel like you're crazy and the only person on earth going through this. No, you see other people. Wow. And then you learn. The second thing, you learn from other people. I've done group coaching as being coached. Phenomenal experience. So you have new relationships, new bonds with new people, because in addition to the group coaching, you're also going to be let into my private group on Facebook so that you'll have an extra added benefit of community. And there's going to be questions and things put in the group that moves you ahead. This is the whole thing. It's we do the weekly coaching, but then during the week, you got to make it sticky, right? It's got to stick integration. So you're going to have fun little you know, questions and things to work out, little assignments, fun stuff. Fun stuff that's designed to connect you to yourself, your heart space, your soul, like just really loving up on you and getting to reconnect with yourself in a very profound way. In a way that once you do it, you're forever changed. You can't go back to the way you were before once you do something like this. This is why it took me so long to create it. <laughs> Because I had to like go back to all my notebooks and be like, oh my God, what did I do in 2015? And how can I take all of that and make it for people in, you know, six weeks? You know, it might even be eight weeks. I think it's, I think it might even be eight weeks. So we're going to, we're going to hang out. It's going to be amazing. So if you're interested in this, I can give you details on the investment. We can have a conversation if you have any kind of question at all. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you don't want to do the group thing. That's cool too. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching all the time. I'm still going to be doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm just opening up this group situation so that I can help more people in one shot. And some people love it. Some people love the group dynamic better than the one-on-one -on -one coaching, right? Also, it's financially more uh, attainable, it's, it's more affordable for people when you work in a group. So that's why I wanted to bring it to the masses as well, just another option to help more people at an affordable price, because one-on-one -on -one coaching is a massive investment, it's expensive. Um, great commitment, I love it, I love my people that I coach one-on-one, -on -one, but there are a lot of people out there who do need this kind of help, and they can do it on a um, group, type of setting and learn so much from one another. So if this sounds like something you wanna enroll in and you want more information in, if you're finding me on a Facebook Live, hit me with a PM. I would love to chat with you and learn about what you have going on and how I can help you. And I'll be happy to tell you more about what this is. Um, tonight, actually, I'm gonna hang up with this and I'm gonna go in my laboratory office and I'm gonna to put together the finishing touches of the actual rundown of the proposal and program. So that's gonna actually be on my website by tonight. And I'll have a, you know, a video and all kinds of good stuff so that there will be information. But if this is something that you're like, sign me up, honey, I've been waiting for you to do a group coaching.
for three years since I have been following you, Lisa, the love coach, and I am definitely into it, then definitely let's get together. Let's enroll you. Let's get this going. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, get started on rebuilding yourself and your love for yourself so that you can feel better, solid, secure, confident, and take the world by storm, honey. Much love to you. I'm Lisa Concepcion, certified professional life coach and founder of lovequestcoaching.com. Thank you so much. Have a blessed night. Bye.